everyone welcome back so I'm doing this video because I kind of want you to get a grip of what it's kind of like dealing with the lawn care industry and something happened today so I went and I don't know why it worked this way but I went and I aerated a lawn worked fine worked flawlessly got it back on the trailer stopped it went back and it wouldn't start at the next job so hopefully I can get this thing back up and running tomorrow um, however, I am going to be doing it with the less than ideal circumstances. So I'm back. Um, it's the following day after I found out basically this pulley right here, it's not going to come off. It's just way too corroded. If I do get it off, I'm going to end up destroying it. So that basically that pulley, I got to buy a new pulley. Um, something I'd have to order, so I'm not just going to be able to jump right back into core aeration like I first anticipated. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, I, the core aerator made it back home. It didn't fall off the trailer. I kind of wish it would have, so I can just kind of gently shove it the rest of the way into a ditch. <sighs> so this is the Lawn Air 4. It's a 19-inch one of the things I am not used to is the having the roller in the front. Um, I don't know if there's any water or anything in it. I notice there's a plug there. It's a little smaller than what I usually use, but this was the least expensive model they had. Um, so it's going to probably take me a little longer to take care of things. That's where it goes. Um, I've been trying to figure all this stuff out, but ultimately, um, went through, went and rented one, because it's... Whew! Alright, so... I just uh, finished up the massive part of the dumpster fire right now. Um, I have to figure out where, how I'm going to proceed with these aerations now, but ultimately it's, it's a lesson learned. It's a problem solved and uh, I just move on to the next, to the next customer, to the next job and life goes on. Everything goes on. Except that, that core aerator. So that's not going on anywhere. We have to figure out what's going on with that. Um, whether it's putting a new engine on it, whether it's completely replacing the machine, whether it's setting it on fire and rolling it down a hill into a ditch. Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. Okay, I won't roll it down a, a hill and on fire into a ditch. Maybe. Um, no, I'm not going to do that. It, I don't like creating fire hazards. Maybe just roll it down into the ditch after we've drained all the fluids out of it. So, but, uh, okay. Anyways, it's just time to move on to the next. This first part of the drama of the saga is over and uh, we deal with the next part. Dumpster fire number two. The Coyera Raider. Okay, we're heading off now to take care of the second phase of the dumpster fire with the core aerator. So we're going to hit the road. Um, we're on our way to go get a new engine.
Okay, by now you should have probably figured out exactly what I'm up to. Uh, I had decided to we'll shut the engine off here. I decided to uh, let the powers of Facebook decide what kind of engine I was going to get. And by meaning that is I contacted the guy on, on Marketplace to see about getting an engine that was available much closer to home than where I'm at right now at Harbor Freight. Uh, I had to drive about an hour to get to this Harbor Freight. They're the only one in the area that has an engine. I called them earlier today. They said they had 21 in stock. So I said that this was probably a good idea. That really doesn't do much for the lighting, does it? Eh, maybe it does. Helps a little. That's better. Um, so I decided to let the guy on Facebook, if he got back to me in time before I had to leave, I was going to go with the Briggs & Stratton uh, if, I, if I could pick it up tonight. He never got back to me. So I'm over here at Harbor Freight. I'm going to go pick up the Predator. The Briggs & Stratton's still not out of the realm of possibility as far as buying it. Um, it's just not going to go on the core aerator at this point because I need an engine now. So we're going with the, unfortunately, going with the Predator. I got a car like driving right in front of me. There go the headlights. Oy. But yeah, so we're going to go with the Predator. We're going to mosey on into Harbor Freight, make sure that they got it on the shelf. I'll probably be using the bathroom while I'm in there too because, well, frankly, I got to go. I'm not bringing you in the bathroom with me, no. Okay, here it is. The six and a half horsepower, eight foot torque, 221 cc. A little under a gallon for a gas tank, that's kind of good to know so I can figure out how much fuel I'm using. It's got this weird thing on the top, I have no idea, but it comes with a gas tank. Um, this is one issue that I got is the pull start comes in the wrong spot but I'm thinking I might be able to um, just be able to turn this so that it'll come down here on the bottom instead of up here and be able to pull it from the back otherwise I'll just take the hood off and start it every time and see if that Briggs is available but uh, yeah I think that's the only issue that I found with it it's got the business end on the right, correct side it's got the shaft on the correct side it's a three-quarter inch shaft but I gotta buy a new pulley anyways which I have I've already ordered for this engine um, because it was cheap on Amazon. Fun throttle. Um, I might have to see if there's a way, looks like there is, that I can actually take my throttle linkage and connect it to that. That's my existing one. That seems really stiff though. Might be because it's on a circular thing. So now, when I called, they said they had like 21 of them. Boom, boom, boom. There's at least three there. So, we should be pretty good. Um, this one doesn't want to spin around. Oh, that's a... Let's see. That's a uh, vertical, not the horizontal. But, yep, there we are. There we go. So I guess get a cart and we will uh, go ahead and load one up. Okay, got out of Harbor Freight. Um got my Predator engine in the back. I also picked up something else because I just can't get out with one thing for some reason. So I got this uh, remote starter. This ought to be nice for the lawnmowers to be able to jump around solenoids and things like that to see if they've got bad solenoids. And business is doing well with that thing. And this is one of the reasons why I'm dealing with all these dumpster fires because or this is one giant dumpster fire and we're, through, we're now in phase two of this and uh we can go get the in, get this unboxed. Let's check it out, and uh, possibly I don't know. See where where to go from there. So this is where we're at. I'm gonna go grab some dinner and head home. Um, I had to drive about an hour to get here, so I'm hungry. By the time I get home, it's gonna be way past dinner. So, well, you, I mean, this is part of the life of the business. It just really is. I just can't afford that, but I mean, you eat a lot of fast food. So let's go get some fast food and head home.
Chicken, 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 which combo are you picking? Hi, can I get the, um, the six chicken finger chaotic combo? Chaotic combo, what's a drink? Um, do you have Coke Zero? Yes, we do. Uh, I'll have that. Alright, anything else? Um, no, that's it. Caniac combo with a large Coke Zero, 1429 at that first window, thank you. Thank you. Gasoline will work. 
Um, there's your bore, 70 millimeters by 55 millimeters, 2.8 inches by 1.8 inches. Again, I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, engine oil capacity, half a quart or half a liter. Um, that's good. It doesn't take a huge amount of oil. Bearing type ball, mounting base plate. Yeah, we'll just hope it fits. Um, PTO shaft diameter, three quarters of an inch, which is pretty standard. Uh, PTO shaft length, 2.43 inches. Again, about two and a half inches. It's pretty standard. PTO shaft height, 4.17 inches. I did measure the one on the Wisconsin Robins. Um, they're pretty close to being about the same. I don't know if about the 0.17, um, but it's roughly about right around 4 inches from the ground. So PTO shaft keyword, 3 sixteenths of an inch. That's standard. Shaft end taper, uh, so it's actually got a tapered end, 5 sixteenths of an inch. Again, that's pretty standard too. Uh, shaft rotation counterclockwise, again, standard. Spark plug F6TC, and then it says torch, LHSP, and LD. I don't know what that means. I'll just figure out the conversions later. It's probably just your standard OHV champion that you would use in it. And uh, so then we come up to opening the box. I think this is where I'm supposed to comment. Look at how nicely they taped this. Ooh, they use some really high quality packaging. Oh, and they even put nice staples in it. I'm sure I'm going to lose those and they're going to end up in my fire and I'm going to be cursing them later. Instructions up on top. Yeah, do I really need instructions? Yeah, I do need instructions, but I need to actually know how to set this up. Some cardboard. I got a nice pretty engine. Oh, look at that. They even say gas only 10% ethanol, blend okay, no E85. Let's see if we can get this somewhere out. Anything else in the box? Nope. Before you start, fill gas heater and add engine oil below. Um, I was kind of hoping they would have given me some engine oil. That's what I need to uh, manual for it to figure out what kind of engine oil to put it. So I'm guessing it's either 30 weight or 10W30. But, whoop. yeah, it's okay. Oil in it. Yeah, I mean, this is going to work out pretty good. One issue. And the picture on the box had it this located someplace else. But the one in the in the store had it located here. So I'm gonna take a wild guess. These things are separated in such a way that I should be able to take this, turn it, and put it back here so that I can actually start it from the back. If the on-off switch is on the front of the engine, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. So I have to re reach up to the front to turn it on and off. Either that or I'll just have to find an alternative bypass for that. But that's not bad. It does have a throttle lever all the way on it. Um, and when I mentioned in the store, it looks like that it has the capability so I can put a cable on it. So I can take the cable on the machine. Again, that's probably not going to be high priority. You know, your standard fuel shut off, on and off. Your choke. Oh, that locks into place. You gotta like push it down and out. So it's your standard choke. Made out of plastic. And it's a fuel shut off. Um, it does come with a gas tank. That was one of the big deals. I guess it, uh, it's probably a gravity fed 
in order to get the gravity to, to take it from the top to the bit. It's pretty extreme. I can't even tell you where the fuel level should be on the screen. I'm not going to get a full gallon of gas in that just yet. There's still some room in there. That's a pretty solid gas cap, too. So far, it's actually not too, doesn't seem too terribly bad. Um, let's get the quick start guide and check out what kind of oil we need to start with it. engine it's desperation um, I'm still unsure a lot of people have great reviews about it again I never have heard anything really super bad about these engines I mean nothing nothing other than you know they're, they're made in China and it doesn't necessarily make an engine bad so um, I've never heard any horror stories about them blowing up or dying quickly or anything like that but I have heard people that say these things are great so we'll, we'll see. Add oil to the crankcase. What kind of oil to add to the crankcase? Yeah, they. That's a four star guys. That's typical Harbor Freight for you. They probably don't even have the engine type. It's in the manual. The oil type in the manual. What do we have here? High altitude instruction on well, the high altitude, so that's okay. Engine type, fuel, oil, type, SAE. 10W30, yeah, 10W30 above 32 degrees, 5W30 at 32 Fahrenheit or below. So we'll do 10W30. Um, I'm not planning on running this thing in the winter. So I just need to get... Spark plugs. Now this is a, this makes better sense. So they give you the NGK, which is BP six ES, and then there's these torch, which I don't know is that something that's available at Harbor Freight, and that's why they it's got a Bosch spark plug in it. I wonder if it's a platinum cap. Um, that right there. I mean, for 150 bucks, just the if it's a platinum tip Bosch, that might be worth the price of the engine. So, let me give you the gap. So they actually did a pretty decent job in the manual. But now we know what kind of oil to put in it. What I want to do is, now that it's out of this box, we're going to put it in the other box and see if it fits. Yeah. I guess we can go ahead and clean this up, put oil in it. We are going to, I'm going to have to figure some kind of fashion, some kind of back plate for this. Whoop. Ouch. I needed a dent in it anyways. It's not right unless I got some kind of scratch or dent or something in it. Um, we'll clean all this junk up. But yeah, right back here in the back place, probably where, where we're going to need it. Um, the on-off switch is, is in a very precarious place. But overall, I, I can deal with that in the short term and then figure out a solution in, in the long term, extend it back here or something like that. Once the you know, once I figure everything out. So, so far so good. Once we get the pulley in, we'll be able to figure everything out and situate everything properly. Um, what I'm thinking is, is if I can just get a mounting plate bolted on these two back holes, drill new holes for this, that it comes out, I can have it sit on here. <laughs> So I'm running into some issues with the grass seed in the back of my truck. A bag spilt over. There's probably got about a good five bucks worth of grass seed there that I got now. Got to clean up. Just add to the, all the drama here. And um, good news is I just got back from Menards with a lot of the stuff that I need for the lawn aerator. The bad news is the Amazon ferry is going to be a day late with the pulley. So we won't be able to complete the project tonight, but. I probably wouldn't be able to anyways because there's a lot of painting involved. So we will get this mess cleaned up and we'll get to the aerator. 
the saga continues. Um, <clears throat> got the lawn air behind me. So earlier today, I went ahead and I started prepping it for paint. Um, sanded it down. Well, first I cleaned it up. Sanded a little down with some 220 grit. I'm not looking to make it pretty and perfect, but you're really not going to see much of this. It's mainly to protect more than anything. You might catch glimpses of it, but you know, you're not going to really see it once the engine's in. The Amazon Ferry surprised me. They said that I wasn't going to get my pulley until tomorrow. I got the pulley today. So, kudos to you, Amazon Ferry. Job well done. Yeah. So I got everything prepped for paint, but I don't want to put any primer or anything on right now. I'm going to start with some etching primer. I'm then going to put some filler primer in, do something to make it look a little nicer. And then I got some paint that I think will match pretty close. Uh, it's dark hunter green rust-oleum. It looks pretty close, I guess. And it, I was in the hardware store when I picked it up. I haven't even tried to match it up to see how well it works, how it looks. But right now, uh, one of the things I picked up was a uh, piece of steel. And this is because I have to put in braces for the engine, because the engine base is a little bit smaller. Um, I went with a bar style because of the thickness of the steel. If I went with a sheet, it was going to be too thin. I couldn't find one wide enough to fit the whole part. So I just went with uh, a bar piece that's about three feet long. I think it actually is more like, yeah, it's three feet long, quarter inch steel. Uh, so we're just going to cut it and put two pieces in there. We're going to have to drill some holes. And I want to get that taken care of before I put any primer on because that this way I can drill the holes while stuff's drying. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to maximize the amount of time I have to work and not have to sit there and watch paint dry. So, I already have the steel marked for how long I need it. I got it in the chop saw. This was a new acquisition I got recently. Um, I didn't know what I was going to use it for at the time, but I knew I was going to need it. And this is its first, first uh, time out going around. I'm actually leaning on it right now. Um, I got it on the floor because I don't know where else to put it. But the steel's marked. It's in there. We just got to go cut it down, and uh, let's see how long that takes. Start again. Okay, so I found out the hallway light is on that breaker, so I shut that off. That should give us an extra 30 seconds or something. bars cut. This was the first one. The other one's still really hot, so I don't want to touch it. But I want to take the this rough edge and I'm going to put it towards the back. And I want to get this marked and drilled. We are, I'm going to grind that down. If 
by the bench grinder. Um, <clears throat> but I want to get these all lined up. That looks pretty good. Mark the holes off, and then we can go ahead and put a uh, primer coat on the machine after I mask off the tag. Okay, so this is basically going to be a three-step process. I got the masking tape. I actually found masking tape. I didn't have to use electrical or duct tape, which is surprising to me. I usually can never find masking tape when I need it. We're going to start with the self-etching primer. This actually helps stick very good to bare metal. There is some bare metal spots in here, but it sticks pretty good to paint and everything else, too. Then we're going to follow that up with this, which is filler primer that's going to fill in any of the little blemishes or anything, the bumps from the paint that's still here, that kind of thing. We're hope, I'm hoping that'll fill that in a little bit. And so when we put on the last coat, which is this, uh, this gloss protective enamel, dark hunter green. And maybe I went with it a little bit too dark. They, they had a little bit lighter one. Yeah, that's pretty close. <clears throat> we'll find out. After that, that, that's the final coat. So we're gonna start with our etching primer. Get that on there. Then I will probably run some errands and uh, drill some holes while we do other coats of this stuff. size hole I need to drill for these and uh, I brought out the drill press and I set my belts if you now this particular one if you open it up you pretty much find the drill bit size you're looking for and the material 15 16 we're going through some hard steel so we actually want the drill to spin slowly from what I can tell or it might be fast I don't know how those speed ratings work exactly but I set the belts to what they recommend and we will see I'm making it this one goes backwards from the rest of them, the rest of the kind of drills. Tighten that sucker up, doing some woodwork. From there, we're going to clamp it down. Move it to the clamp. Now I unplug this because I put it in my basement and I don't want my child to play with it. Pop that in, flip it on. I also brought with me an oil can. And as we get started, this is actually going to help with the drilling. It cools down the metal and uh, helps uh, drill. That just shifted as soon as I turned it on. Maybe we'll use a different clamp.
because the drilling ended up being so quick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the burrs from the cutting on this. I'm just going to use the bench grinder. Make sure you have all your PPE, you know, whatever your personal protective equipment, your PPE, yeah, that's it. Gloves are good, safety glasses. Um, make sure the guards are in place. Yeah, I'll fix that later. Um, one of these days, I'm not going to break these. <laughs> Um, I'm choosing to use this wheel over this wheel. The reason why is this is the wheel I use to sharpen my blades on. It's already got a nice little 45 degree groove in it. So I don't want to mess with that. So we're going to use this wheel to kind of get these burrs off. And away we go. <laughs> camera battery died and while I was charging I went ahead and took care of a few other things on the uh, mower first off I drilled the holes in the wrong place on these cross beams so I don't think that's going to affect the um, its ability to you know hold it at all I don't think it, that, that I took enough metal out of it for that for those two extra holes but these are the correct should be the correct holes these are the ones we drilled, or I drilled before. So that's one of the things you, you, you missed out on that. Um, if you notice, I already have primer on it. I'll probably skip the filler primer on it and go straight to paint because I'm dealing with bare metal on that. I do have to uh, put the bare metal, or, you know, get the bare metal painted otherwise it's going to just completely rust anything and then we also got the interior cab of this painted it's actually a pretty close color considering it's just spray paint picked up off of the shelf in the uh, of the store so that's looking pretty we'll probably do a second coat and uh, maybe put some put some clear coat on it as well as finish painting these other bars so it's coming along um, until tomorrow. Um, next step, and hopefully we can finish up this, button this up, and uh, finish up the dumpster fire. I hope so, because I booked another quarry aeration for Monday, and I'd like to have this for that. And I have another one in the cooker, so I don't want to have to rent another machine. So we will, we will we'll see.